hello, sports fans. Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is socializing the di- socialing the distance, and we're with Mario Mendoza. And last week he did the hundred K, which is pretty incredible. Anyway, in six thirty nine twenty six, but he did it on a treadmill, which I think Mario worship you, but I'm also think it's insane. So it's that combo, okay? And uh, just want to talk with you a little bit about it. How are you feeling right now? Today's a little bit better. I uh, I had a pretty rough day yesterday. So the run was on Saturday, and mm-hmm. and uh, that night and yesterday was pretty pretty tough. Uh, my body kind of just gets overly awake, where I have a hard time sleeping, even though I'm super tired. Sure. So, I'm hoping tonight I crash and I can actually get some good rest. <laughs> okay, I want to ask you a little bit about just the the whole idea of competing on a treadmill. Like in Wisconsin most of the year, okay? So during the snow, I pull out mine and I'll go for a couple hours on my treadmill watching movies and stuff. Do you train for 100K on a treadmill or do you do long runs on the treadmill? You, um, I don't think you need that many runs but you've got to be used to being bored on a treadmill so okay so okay. i think um what helped me is that i've done a 50k on a treadmill already this year and so at least i knew what that was like and mm-hmm. i wasn't just you know gonna run a 62 mile race sure. uh without without being on a treadmill so i did do maybe a third of my training on a treadmill the last two weeks and I was I was kind of going off of the experience that I had earlier this year as well, uh, but I'm used to treadmill running. I do it in the winter just like yourself, and um, and just uh, we'll mm-hmm. we'll zone out or or listen to some podcasts and some music. Where are you based out of? Bend, Oregon. Oh, cool. Okay, so yeah, you're dealing with a little bit of uh, uh, climate change, a uh, little weather out there. Um, so you used to have the 50K treadmill world record, is that correct? Yeah, in January. And what was that? What was the time you did for that? It was 2.59. Wow, that's flying. Um, and then your 100K record is 639.26. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the hardest part of the 100K for you? Was it? just be on there that whole time um yeah the when i was trying to think of the pace i needed to run it was uh, it was 625 per mile for 62 miles when i when i thought of that i actually was kind of freaked out myself uh, and, and i i really um gave myself a pretty pretty low chance of actually hitting it but i knew i could get through 40 because um when i did the 50k I did it for a high school here in Oregon. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't at, at sea level and it wasn't in a place with AC air conditioning. And wow. so I knew, I knew based on that, that I could go faster. And so I was like, I was calculating in my head that if I slow down a little bit, like I knew I could get through 40 miles. Mm-hmm. And so then I was like, after that, I don't really know what's going to happen. Sure. <laughs> and, and it kind of, it kind of scared me, but um, I thought, why not? Why not give it a shot? Let's just give this a real go and try to run the effort very consistently, and and hope it's it's there. So, how did you get into ultra running? It was pretty natural progression for me. I got into trail running immediately when I moved to Bend. And that mm-hmm. was a little over 10 years ago. And it was okay. just, it was just like, I was here and I saw tons of trails and I got to run with, with Max King. Sure. And it was just all trail running. And I was like, this is, this is awesome. I just mm-hmm. immediately connected with it and just started doing 10 Ks, half marathons up to marathon. And then it was after the marathon that I was starting to get curious with like, what would happen if I do 50 K? Mm-hmm. And, and then after 50k what would happen if i would do 50 miles and so it's just very gradual i, I took my time I, I didn't rush jumping up distance what was the 
if you were talking to a group of people, so they all have marathon experience, okay? But they want to do their first ultra. What was the biggest mistake you made in when you started doing ultras? Uh, nutrition. I did not do enough research on nutrition, and I okay. would only, I would only take water, sure. um, and I was missing out on these like calorie drinks that mm -hmm. could just get calories in you and be easier on your on your gut. And so, for a couple of years, I was kind of like I was doing well in the fifty k, but I was not doing well after fifty k because you really have to fuel well and so um that that was the biggest mistake i would say really try to figure out what works well with your body um mm -hmm. and, and do those runs where you don't care about pace but you're just out for a few hours and just out in the woods and, and that'll prepare you well for the 100k what type of nutritional things did you have to do i tried to eat more solid stuff Okay. earlier on so um in the first 30 miles i had two honey stinger waffles which was pretty big for me usually i can't get two down i can usually do like one or one and a half so the fact mm -hmm. that i got two was pretty exciting yeah. um and i did water and then uh, tailwind and yeah. I had a little bit of uh cold brew coffee which okay which Hit the spot, yeah. Is the, caf the, the caffeine doesn't bother your stomach? No, no. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm one of those that can handle it well, and it actually clears my mind, and just mm -hmm. I just feel feel good. So um, I'm careful with it, but not. I seem to handle it really well. What was the biggest transition from going from 50k to 50 miles? That is a pretty big jump. I. Um, mm -hmm. I think that when you go from 50K to 50 miles, you really got to put in uh, those, those training runs that are going to beat up your, your quads and your legs. And, mm -hmm. and you probably want to try a couple of back-to-back -back long runs because it's, it's a big jump. It's, uh, the 50K is actually, in my opinion, a little easier to get on because mm -hmm. you're on trail. Um, and it's fun and you're you're able to stop at eight stations and eat uh where where a 50 mile that actually does feel quite a bit harder than a, mar a road marathon when you're talking about long runs for a 50 miler what are you suggesting four hours five hours is that i think maybe? four hours is is enough yeah i definitely okay. think four hours is good or or distance like you can try a few like 18 to 20 mile runs back to back and then and then at least i would definitely say at least one good marathon distance run where before, people before love, you, yeah before you got into trail and ultra you were racing on the roads not a ton i uh i went to a college that at the time did not have track okay and so I was always more of a cross country runner. Cool. And so when I finished college, I I did run a few marathons, but not not a lot. I actually got into trail running very very quickly, and I haven't really done road stuff like my marathon PR is from eight years ago. So it's uh -huh. been it's been forever. Yeah. What was your marathon PB? Two twenty three. Oh wow, that's pretty dang fast. Do you, do you see the, um, if you went back and did a marathon now, do you think the ultra running would have help would help you with what you did the marathon? Yeah, definitely. Cause I, um, I actually kind of faded in that, mm -hmm. in that marathon. Like I was on, on two eighteen ish pace and, and then just the last 10 K, uh, I was not ready for that, that like asphalt. And mm -hmm. I think that once you go past the distance and just even like, cause I've done a hundred miles. And so now you, your, your mentality is like, Oh, a marathon is, is fast. I mean, a marathon is, is easy and it, and, 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 uh, you can actually just go for it from the, from the gun. So I, I definitely think I could run, um, under for sure under 220. That that's what I think. Um, sure. I don't know if, maybe i can get under 218 
some, somewhere around there. I've run 106 and a half, which, which okay. is yeah. a good lake speed. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, talk to me about the, the mental side of being on a treadmill for six hours and 40 minutes or just under that. Um, what was the biggest challenge for you with that? Yeah, um, that was definitely the hardest part. I, I really needed the first half of it to go by fast. Okay. Because, um, that distance is, is brutal. The time you're on the treadmill is brutal. And so I really tried to not even think about the run itself um, for the first, at least the first 20 miles. I was really kind of zoned out and just trying to think of other things and uh, listening to, um, I actually had, I, I like listening to scripture. So I just had scripture playing and cool. zoned into that. Um, and, and so it wasn't until then that I started, okay, like breaking up what I had left and mm -hmm. figuring out exactly how my body was feeling and how to ride, ride that wave and how to prepare myself for when it was going to get super tough. So the key, I think, is you really want to break things up. You, mm -hmm. you don't want to think of it as, as a 62-mile run. You want to think of it as, as you're doing a, first a 20-miler and then the next section is, is a, a 10 miler to get yourself right about the halfway mark. And then you really want to um, start breaking it after that to five mile sections. And, and there's, some, there's some really key turning points in your head. Like I, I remember thinking as soon as I was getting to that two thirds of the race in, mm -hmm. it was actually like, oh, like I'm two thirds done. You know, it was, it was sort of a, a a shift in my mentality um, versus that that 35 mile to 39 mile mark was pretty rough because you you just feel like you have so much left still. <laughs> yeah. What was the um, when did you allow yourself to think that you were going to get the record? To be completely honest, it was not till mile 57. Wow. Uh, we, um, I was actually about a minute off at mile 50. Okay. And so I knew I had 12 miles to go and I needed to make up a minute. And so I was like, I was like, okay, I got to go up at least a couple points a mile per hour up. And so I, I was like, I, I was not feeling great, but at that mm -hmm. point I knew I was either gonna, gonna break or I was going to uh, get it because I, I wanted to try. I didn't want to like be thinking or regretting later that I didn't try to go for it. So I, I picked it up and uh, thankfully the body held up and, and, and it got into that rhythm. And mm -hmm. I think that the next, the next six miles till, till mile 57 was a real test. That was the, yeah. the make or break. Um, because by the time I got to 57, I was back on pace and I was moving well, and I just could, I could smell the finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the difference between 100K on a treadmill and 100K on the roads? Which is it, tougher? That's a really good question. I would, I would say 100K on the roads is tougher mm -hmm. um, because it's a little bit more muscle uh, pounding. So um, I would I would say the treadmill is just a it's just a little softer, and that helps. That really does make a difference. Mm -hmm. Now you were using the new Brooks Hyperion racer. Um, yes, the Elite. Mm -hmm. Elite, yep. and that's the one. Des, I saw that one in uh, Atlanta. Yep. Des had used that one yep. back there. How did you? Um, do you prefer really light shoes when you're even racing ultra distances? I do. I, I want to feel a shoe that that has enough cushion. Okay. But I also, I don't really like bulky shoes because if I have a really bulky shoe, I feel like I'm having to work harder. Okay. Um, okay. To push, to push off and to really feel each um, stride. And so I think 
that the balance of, of having a little bit of cushion, but a light shoe really um, helps your mechanics work fully mm -hmm. and, and your mechanics naturally absorb each step. And so it's like, it's almost like your body's efficiency creates um, some, some shock absorption. And so, so that's why I, I've found more success with, with a pretty fast shoe. I mean, even, I think you could almost run a hundred miles with this shoe. Like I really, I really, you'd be, you'd be comfortable obviously in over 50 K or 50 miles with this thing. Yeah. With the new one. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I did well, really well with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, um, now in the olden days when I was coming through and I, like I knew Ray Clark, uh, who was one of the big ultra guys, he actually trained in the same place I did for years and I'd be, going out for my 20 on a Sunday morning thinking I was cool and I would see them and they had been out for two and a half hours already. So, you know, that's, you got your humility, but he would tell me about how he would have to change shoes sometimes during some of the ultras. Did you have to do that on the treadmill this time or not? Thankfully, no, I, I was prepared to, I had, um, my little, my little station on a table. I had a uh, Hyperion elite, uh, size, a size bigger, half a size bigger. Okay. Okay. In case my feet swelled up. And then I had, um, I actually had a little bit of a, a faster shoe. Um, the, the version one, just okay. a little lighter. And, and it was just in case, like, I don't know. I just thought in case I need to switch shoes and need, feel like sure. I need to go for a super fast, you know, version of it. Um, mm -hmm. but I like, I like the, the more cushioned one. I, I just felt it worked really well. It wasn't too cushioned and it wasn't too light. It was just perfect. How long will it take you to recover from a hundred K race? I think this one's going to be tough. I, I think just that, that like pounding on the legs, exact same leg muscles. Sure. I think the, the trail version of a hundred K is a lot nicer on your body. Um, I'm guessing a good, for sure, a good 10 days of, okay. of this, like, active recovery. Um, this week is going to be very, very low. And I'm excited, actually, because I've been training pretty hard. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just like, I was like, I, I, need a, I needed a break anyway. So sure. it's going to work out well. What's your typical training like? I have lately been running close to 100-mile weeks, which – which is high for me. I okay. have always kind of been a little bit lower mileage guy, like sure. around 85 miles a week. And mm -hmm. so the fact that I've been training close to hundred miles was, was, um, kind of comforting because mm -hmm. I was putting in the work and I tend to put in about 13,000 feet of, of vertical gain because I, I love the mountain. Wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. So I just, I love trail running. I um, love climbing uh, peaks and just mm -hmm. getting that, that amazing view. So I usually try to include two, two climbs, big climbs a week. And then um, I don't do a lot of doubles, but uh, I'll try to maybe add one or two days a week where I'll double. Mm -hmm. And then uh, usually two long runs and one or two kind of workouts where it's either a tempo run or some some short intervals when you're doing a tempo run tell us a little bit about how you do a tempo run i i try to gear those up to uh the type of of race that i'll be doing so if i'm in a race a half marathon or a marathon i want to do something like like 10 mile tempo runs okay and, and maybe i'll do one or two miles warm up and then I'll really just try to hit like low five minutes to five thirty pace um, mm -hmm. these runs and just, just really try to maintain an even heart rate. Okay. Um, and, and just, I, 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 I'm a person that trains a little cautiously because I don't want to overtrain. So sure. I'm really right at that, like 85, 90%. Um, and then mm -hmm. when I'm doing a longer race, like for this, I was doing more like 20 mile tempos, but I would warm up into it. So I would maybe hit 
um, a 640, 630 first mile and then just slowly grind and, and get into the five minute pace and then just try to get to like the 530 pace. And so um, almost like doing a marathon, but just sticking at that two hour mark because then your okay. body doesn't break down as much. So cool. I, yeah. How do you use um, heart rate? Are you, are you monitoring your heart rate all the time? Not all the time. I would say I only do it about one out of 10 runs. Okay. And always a uh, key runs that I just want to, I want to get some more data, see if my mm -hmm. body's recovering and just making sure that, um, that I'm in the right zone. But I, I'm very, very big on intuition and trying to learn your sure. body rhythms and, and, um, making sure I'm recovering well and just making sure I'm also doing those, those easy runs. Like I, I do some runs that I'm going, um, you know, eight, eight minute pace and I don't, I don't, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't get, yeah. To my head. yeah. Okay. Yeah. When, when you're doing, um, the self knowledge, I think is really important in any part of racing. When you're in a, um, hundred miler, what is the, how do you take yourself through that? Did you break that into segments as well? Yes, I I have only run three, and yeah. um, I would say that the last one was my best one. I think I'm finally like understanding it better. But the hundred mile, when you get to hundred k, that's barely halfway. So yeah. you really you really have to um, pace yourself. Like you really need to to take it out slow um, and, and just really understand that you're going to be out there for a really long time. And so um, for a hundred mile, you, um, I tend to focus on the next section to the aid station. So yeah. I break up the race into how the aid stations are formed and the next like climb that I have in the next downhill, because um, in the hundred mile, you actually spend more time at the aid stations. In shorter yeah. races, you want to get out like 30 seconds or maybe a minute at most. But in a 100 mile, you do want to spend two or three minutes. Sometimes I've, I've heard guys have spent 10 minutes just making sure they're eating well because um, if you crash, you're going to lose two or three hours at the end. Wow. And wow. So, it, so it makes more sense to take care of your body early on. Mm -hmm. Do you have interest in doing the 24-hour 20, uh, event? Is that something down the road for you? Right now, I would say no. I, okay. I, really, I really think the 100 mile is, is, is like beautiful and it's just, like, it's just such a good distance cool. that I, I've found, you know, if, if you can be very competitive in that and even 100K, it's, mm -hmm. it's enough. I, 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 just, I don't know. I think... 24 hour might be a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> Which hundred mile races have you done? So I did um, uh, Rocky Raccoon. So that okay. one's a little bit flatter one. I did okay. that one in, in 14 hours. I did Western States. Um, that one I did in 18 hours. And then I did my own um, community run where I ran hundred miles in California um, for, for youth there. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that one I did in 16 hours. So it's kind of in the middle. So I'm like right in that 14 to 18 hour range right now. And I would, uh, I would like to improve on that. So tell me about Western States. That's one of the iconic races. And, uh, we featured it on our, the cover of Caltrack a few years and the pictures are just amazing. And I've had buddies who've run it. What impressed you about that event? The, um, Definitely the, the amount of, of spectators. I think that uh, usually it's in Europe where you see that many people out on the trails. Like in Europe, in big races, you'll be out in the middle of nowhere and you're, you're seeing like thousands of people and you're like, how did you guys get out here? You know, you had to hike these crazy mountains to get out here. And I would say Western States is one of the few trail racers in the U.S., probably the North Face and Lake Sonoma mm -hmm. as well, but uh, very few races in the U.S. have that many crowds out in the aid stations. And so it's very unique. It's really 
awesome to have um, just that type of, of like almost like a, what you feel in a, in a big time marathon where you just you got people cheering and screaming and fans and and I think that's cool because in a trail race you spend so much time by yourself sure. that, um, that those uh, drastic changes of you know you could be one mile out from the aid station and there's no one and you could be completely by yourself and then you get into the aid station and there's like a thousand people and it's just like yeah. It's such a cool, <laughs> cool experience. What was it like finishing Western States? That was Western. epic. I um, I actually really liked the symbolism of you know finishing on the track, one lap on the track, and um, my my family was there, so I got to I got to have them uh, like like jog with me that whole lap, and um, just just knowing the history behind it and and uh, and just just soaking it in. It was, it was awesome. And especially cause, uh, I had a really bad last 10 miles, like really, really bad that I almost, I almost thought of dropping out. And so, you know, just uh-huh. knowing that I didn't yeah. and I got to the finish was very emotional to me uh-huh. and meaningful. Will you do it again? I, I actually do want to now. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. Yeah. To give it another go. Yeah. So, I did 18 marathons, you know, in a, in an earlier life. Um, and people always used to, you know, they would always ask me right after you finished, Hey, you going to do another one, you know, and right after a marathon, you're like, of course, you know, you're kind of going, well, maybe someday, but you don't want to think about it. So after, after a hundred miler, if someone asked you, you going to do another one, how do you feel about those kind of things? Or You're definitely like, no way. Like you're just yeah. for, for that race that long, you're like, no way. And then something changes like about four or five days after and, and mm-hmm. it starts sinking in um, and your body starts to recover and your, your mind forgets how, how uh, tough it was and how brutal <laughs> it was. You start thinking like, oh man, I, I, I want to do this again. And, and so I, I can definitely relate to that. It's, it's uh, interesting how, how we function like that where... Sure where you first are kind of like, uh, and then it's like, yep, yep, we're totally doing this again. <laughs> How has your training been affected during the pandemic? Actually, for me, I know most people, they've had a hard time with motivation, but I had a little more time because um, I, I'm a very busy person. And so uh, I had more time. And so that's so why I was running the most I've done in a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And it was the biggest two month block I've ever done. So for Um, me, I've actually done pretty well because the right now the trails are actually some of the safest places, especially if you know all the, all the wilderness ones are. And so, um, I, I don't know, not that I'm happy that there's a pandemic, but I I, I understand. understand. (laughs) You have, um, do you train on the trails every day? I ninety percent. Okay. About ninety percent. Yeah. Okay. We we we're, we're about thirty minutes into this. We got about five more minutes to put up with me, Mario. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so I got some quick questions for you now. Um, what's your favorite race of all times? Oof! Uh, oof that's so hard. I would say. I, I've had a special thing with like, with the, the world championship. So okay. the only thing that's interesting about it is it changes locations. Sure. And so I can't, re- it's not about the location, but just the, the ability to put on that uniform and run for a team. Um, I think that's my favorite. Like I, I just have very fond memories of, of those races. How many times have you done that? The world championship three times. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and the distance is at a hundred K it changes actually. Oh, so really? Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. it, in the ultra distance, it goes from 50 K up to, uh, 85 K is the longest one. So, okay. so they kind of change just cause different guys are good at different things. Um, the mountain running that I've done, that one is either really short like 10k or 12k or it's a, a marathon and above so 
Um, so that one is, is, is pretty rugged as well. So let me ask you about the, the, the trail ones, because I'm curious. So the short, is it like fell running? So is it just amazingly awful hills, up, up hills and down hills? It, the crazy thing is each year is very unique. There's been a few years where it's, it's very, very runnable, but okay. just incredibly steep. Okay. So, so just fast, runnable, but like a lot, a lot of climbing. Um, and then other times it is more like, like not as extreme as a fell race, but, but close enough where, mm -hmm. where it is technical, there's roots, there's mud. You've got to, you've got to really be athletic and, um, and confident in your body to, to make it through. Yeah. Do you like racing in Europe? Yeah. Yeah, I missed that during this time because um, mm -hmm. I was supposed to be over there in the spring, and it's it's really fun. Just the trail running over there has really taken off, and it's just in a in a in a a little more advanced place than we are so far. And so you just feel you feel like a real like professional athlete over there. It's just like That's cool. energy in the crowds. Yeah, I did an ultra in. Um, southern france where the first 15k we had to wear a spelunking light you know and go through a cave and it was a 40 what was it i did the first 15k because I, I was there to watch it but it was 45k uh so it was a rather short one but guys were using those nordic poles you know which yep. i had not not seen before and they were moving i mean they really fly with those things and it's fascinating to watch the different techniques, I think, too, you know. Yeah. Uh, talk to me. Uh, finally, want to get back to you about the treadmill. Will you do 100K again? Oof. I, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think I want to do the same distances again. I think I would have to, uh -huh. I'd have to try something different. Um, I, I had considered doing the 50K again just because yeah. it'd be nice to see, like, if I went to sea level – and I wore, you know, the new shoes and um, was in a place with, with uh, AC. Just I kind of want to see what I could do. But uh, at the same time, it's like when, when you enjoy something, like I enjoyed that run with the kids at the high school so yeah. much that I don't want to mess it up. Like, sure. It was completely satisfying. And I don't, mm -hmm. don't want to mess up that, that memory that I have and like sure. change it. So... I don't think I'll do it again. I think it would have to be something different. Um, why do you love trail running? I am actually a very introverted person. Okay. And I draw energy just being out by myself and, and being able to connect to, to the environment and to my surroundings. So trail running just really clicks with my personality and I, I love nature. I love um, water and, and mountains. And every time you climb uh, a big mountain, you just feel really accomplished when you get to mm -hmm. see that, that view and over, oversee everything. And, and it becomes addicting. It's just, it just feels like awesome to, to complete something. So I, I love it. I, I wouldn't, change it for anything and why do you love ultra running ultra running one because you get to spend more time on the trails sure. and, and two because it really tests you i um i've learned so much about my own self in those moments of, of testing and those moments of of being being broken and and just wanting to respond a certain way but your body's screaming at you and you respond a different way and you get moody i just i i feel like it's like uh just an extreme way of of training yourself to to be uh to be better to be a better person so i, I like uh, it the uh, what's your do you have an, a, a race plan is there something coming up right now a race that you're looking at right now there's not but I think we will know pretty soon. I think that okay. it's looking like maybe October races will come back on. And mm -hmm. so right now I'm just 
kind of enjoying um, these projects and, and it's fun that I've, you know, been able to still get some, some really strong efforts out there. And I think I want to go for an FKT, just something, something in this area that, um, that will be exciting and just something to go after. And then, um, I am hoping that by July I'll have a race on a schedule, hopefully, but we'll see. Now, how long have you been with Brooks? This is my second year. Good. Good for you. Yeah. They're good people. Yeah. yeah, I've known them for a long time. It's great. I like to see the brands investing in trail running and ultra running. I think it's really important, and they really are. And it's uh, you see, and, and I love their trail shoes. You know, I mean, oh, they have, they have yeah. some really nice stuff, and it's just, uh, especially in Wisconsin, I love to have use them during the snow. That's my favorite thing to go out after a nice big snow. So it uh, yeah, it's totally. Really fun. Totally. But Mario, thank you so much. And I'm going to do just, this is uh, Layer Eater and with Run Blog Run. And this has been uh, Socialing the Distance. And we've been Mario with Mendoza, who is the new uh, treadmill 100K world record holder at 6 hours, 39 minutes, and 26 seconds. And you look amazing. And I hope you recover well, Mario. And thank you for your time. We've learned a lot about the sport and you. So thank you very much. You have a good day. Yeah, you guys too. Uh, cheers, stay positive, and uh, and take care of each other, okay? All right. All right, well, thank you very much. Talk to you, you soon. Good. Bye now. Hey, sports fans, it's Claire Eater again, and this is Run Blog Run, and this is social Socialing the Distance, and this is our second guest, Mario Mendoza, and Mario is a Brooks Trail and Ultra athlete. And last weekend, he did the 100K, 62.2 miles, baby, on a treadmill, setting a world record, six hours, 39 minutes, 26 seconds, which I think is absolutely insane. He used to have the world record at the 50K, which is about two hours, 59, for the uh, 31.08. But uh, pretty impressive. Very nice guy. Uh, Lives up by Bend and uh, loves the trails and has 100 milers including the iconic western states uh which he did in what at about 14 plus hours and then he's done another 118 hours another one in 16 but very mellow guy uh you can see how he can do the whole ultra and trail thing and uh i asked him some questions about um what he loved about trail running what he loved about ultra running but I think the sense you get with Mario is just that, uh, you know, you're doing 90 to 100 miles a week in the trails and you're in with nature and the endorphins are everywhere and uh, you feel pretty mellow and you feel pretty good. And it's a lifestyle all of us can aspire to. Uh, And some of uh, us shoot for the stars and Mario has done that. Uh, Doing a, a, a... Doing 100K under seven hours is pretty damn impressive. Doing 100K in 639.26 is pure insanity, okay? Um, it's There's just not too many people in the world who can do that. And I was curious to pick his brain and see what he was like. And uh, he's, a, he's a real class act, uh, just a good person. And uh, we need more good people in this world. Uh, it was also nice to talk to him that he said in the last two months during the uh, during the pandemic, he's had some of the best training of his life. And we can also learn from that, too. What does that mean? Find a few things you can do. Enjoy it. Don't flip out. Don't worry about the aliens giving us COVID, you know, or the communists, yeah, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's... Uh, no conspiracies, although I do still think Elvis is alive. 26% of Americans believe Elvis is still alive, just so you know. But I've digressed. Um, but uh, Socialing the Distance is our new series on uh, talking to some of the, the newsmakers out there. And uh, we had Clayton Murphy last week, and we have Mario this week, and we've got some surprise guests coming up. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, thank you to Adam Johnson Eater for producing and managing this one. And Mike Deering for 
managing overall the stuff we're doing. The shoe addicts uh, handle this stuff for us, and uh, we'll do clips, and we'll have the full version too, probably in about a week. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Thank you again for watching our programming. If you have ideas, send us an email at runblogrun at gmail.com. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run and Socialing the Distance, signing off. <laughs>